What's up YouTube? Today I want to talk to you about the electronic and the mechanical shutters inside the Fuji X-T2 and pretty much all mirrorless cameras. If you yourself just got a new mirrorless camera, you might have stumbled on the electronic shutter feature and have some questions about it. So I briefly want to go over the pros and cons and when you should use it and when it's actually going to cause some problems so that you don't come home with any weird photos. So first off, I want to talk about how the mechanical shutter and the electronic shutters actually work. The mechanical shutter is actually a moving shutter that opens and it allows the sensor to be exposed to light. The electronic shutter is already being exposed to light, however, it's reading the information line by line across the sensor. So there's actually no moving parts when using an electronic shutter. So we all know we kind of tell the age of a camera based on its shutter actuations, how many times that shutter has opened and closed. Uh, with the electronic shutter, we really don't have to think about that. That brings us to perk number one of the electronic shutter, which is there are no moving parts, which means there's going to be no physical wear on the inside of the camera. I always have known when one of my DSLRs is getting up there, um, when it's going to probably need to be replaced soon because my shutter actuations are getting high compared to the rating for the camera. Some it's 100,000, 150, 300, 400,000, but they all have a limit of when you can kind of estimate that it's going to be time to get a new shutter soon. And with the electronic shutter, you don't have to worry about that at all. In addition to that, there's no shutter shock, which is the actual kind of feeling and movements within the body caused by a mechanical shutter. With an electronic shutter, there's not going to be any movements. In a mechanical shutter, the shock of taking the photo can actually have an impact on the quality of the photo, whereas that's not going to happen with an electronic shutter. The next perk is silence. Um, you can have sound with a uh, electronic shutter, but it by itself does not make any sound. Uh, you can go in and emulate a sound through most cameras. However, uh, an electronic shutter is completely silent and does not actually make a sound, which I absolutely love. That's my favorite thing about the electronic shutter is that people don't know how many photos I'm taking or sometimes don't think I took a photo at all because they had no sound associated with it. Also great in ceremonies where you don't want to be a distraction uh, or anything that's just sensitive for taking photos. I actually took a few photos uh, watching somebody do glass blowing in Italy and it was really cool because I didn't cause any distractions or kind of have them deviate from what they were doing because they didn't know I was taking photos at all and I love that. And lastly, you can actually get a faster shutter speed with the electronic shutter uh, right on the Fuji X-T2. It is 1 32,000th instead of 1 4,000th which you can get out of the mechanical shutter. Now, there are also some cons of using the electronic shutter. First off, the actual process of the electronic shutter of reading each individual line of information is estimated to take around 1 15th of a second. So that can cause some problems both in light movement and camera movement. So first let's think about light. Uh, fluorescent lighting or indoor lighting is known to pulsate uh, between intensities and temperatures and cause a whole bunch of problems. So if you've ever used a DSLR in fluorescent lighting and you had too high of a shutter speed, you might have noticed gradients of color differences. Now it's even worse with an electronic shutter, you can actually get banding because each individual line of the image is being captured at a different time and because of that you're going to see a lot more changes in the light. So while you can counter it by doing a slow enough shutter speed on a mechanical shutter image, you can't actually combat it using the electronic shutter. Now I'm going to go ahead and post up a couple examples of this just so that you guys can look at the same shutter speed. The photos that I'm showing you right now are the exact same shutter speed. The first one is with the mechanical shutter and you can see the little bits of deviation in the image. If I went a little bit slower here, it wouldn't be too hard to fix. Now the next image is the electronic shutter. As you can see in the image of the electronic shutter, these are very strong lines and this would be pretty much impossible to fix. Uh, and, and this will happen at any shutter speed, not just the one that we did. And this is a problem that's inherent of the rolling shutter. Next up, if we are capturing fast moving objects, we are also going to run into issues because again, we are processing those objects on a line by line data and you might see skewing and strange perspective shifts. Now, I haven't captured a fast moving subject where I would see something like this, but if you just Google 
Uh, if you do any Google results, you can see when people shoot like fast cars going by or something like that, they have this strange kind of skewed effect that you're going to run into. So you're not really ideal for very fast moving subjects. And lastly is it's going to have some issues if you yourself have camera motion. So you don't run into that too much with these really light bodies, but again, it takes 1 15th of a second or about that to complete an electronic shutter exposure. So you have to think how much do you move in that time and how that's going to affect the scene that you're capturing. So you can definitely just trick it. I, I mean, I was doing it where I just whipped and, and shot at the same time. You just get these crazy, it's actually kind of cool, uh, these crazy representations of a scene. Um, I actually might play with that a little bit, but it's not something you're gonna want if you're taking a picture of somebody's face or pretty much anything. You're not gonna want that kind of skewed unless you're just being experimental. So those are pretty much the pros and cons of the electronic shutter and mechanical shutter so that you guys can decide. I pretty much know not to use the electronic shutter in, in that certain lighting. Uh, I figured that out very quick. It was something I was not thinking about when I first owned the body, so I wish I would have known in advance, but you know, growing pains of the first mirrorless body for me, I'm learning very quick what to look out for. So if you guys have any questions about the electronic or mechanical shutter, maybe a specific situation that you're wondering if it's going to work, um, let me know and I'll answer that the best I can. Hope this helped you out. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe, like, share, or if you didn't like it, tell me why. Take it easy YouTube.